in the introduction of the report, it is mentioned that the European Commission in 2018 in its enlargement strategy uh, mentioned that there are elements of state capture in all Western Balkan countries. As far as I see, this was the first time where in an official EU document in relation to the Western Balkans, there was mention of uh, the phenomenon of state capture. And as you rightly say in your introduction in your report, this came quite as a shock uh, to the region. And I've heard this from many sides myself. Indeed, state capture is a very strong word. And I have to confess that I personally have always been a bit skeptical with the use of this word. My skepticism is a bit that the notion is very broad and not extremely clear. If you speak about capture of a state, the first question is, of course, by whom? Uh, it is rather the state capture by a political party, maybe by a politician who uh, originally had having been elected as president or as prime minister. State capture could also be something coming very much from within the system. When we examined rule of law problems in, in Macedonia, um, it was very much uh, the capture of the judiciary by the government, which is not a state capture from outside, but it's a capture of one institution by the other. You have on paper and in the law, you have quite a lot of checks and balances over side institutions. You have an ombudsman, you have a data protection authority, you have very often anti-corruption offices and so on. And what uh, we unfortunately see that although these institutions, these oversight bodies, which are all meant for different areas to control the state within the state institutions, that they have on paper a lot of powers, but they don't exercise. They don't have the courage to exercise. To capture a state, you need somebody who wants to capture it, but you have also somebody who is being captured or who, in other words, who must have the power, the courage, and has to speak up to oppose the state capture. 